Good morning, folks. We are sun-focused here today. Twin X-class solar flares erupted at the northern sunspots as the group gained magnetic complexity after central development. We'll hit two quick science articles as well, but we are starting with the last 24 hours on our star. You'll see two flashes at the northern group and two other eruptions as well, one from the bottom left at the limb and the other a plasma filament towards the departing limb on the right. We're going to take a better look at all of them here. We're going to start with the X-ray flux chart, which shows the two big flaring events as the spikes into X-class range on the right. They both erupted from that northern sunspot group. There was also a longer duration M-class flare near the bottom solar crown. Luckily, the X-class events were relatively impulsive and they did not create coronal mass ejections. Those northern sunspots gained a bit of magnetic complexity near the front central region of the sunspots and began after a plasma release near the leading umbra that began destabilizing the umbral magnetic fields within the active region, which then ended up triggering the flares. You can see how the flash erupted towards the leading half of the sunspot region. Now, while neither of those events created CMEs, they both ionized the ionosphere and caused radio blackouts in the area affected. First one hit the central and west Pacific region, while the second one was centered on the Indian Ocean. We'll keep monitoring that sunspot group today for more eruptive activity. Up next, we'll take a quick look at the two CMEs. The first one was from a long duration M flare off the south and coming there. That one will miss the Earth. And the other came from one of the plasma filaments that was departing the Earth facing half of the sun and erupted directly outward to the right. We'll also miss our planet couple days of quiet have ended, and the solar eruption watch is now back in full swing with those northern sunspots. Two articles we wanted to share this morning. The first is the isostatic readjustment on the east coast of the United States due to post-glacial rebound effects. And at the rates listed, this completely explains all of the so-called sea level rise in the area. That rise and fall of land is responsible for nearly all the alleged change in water levels at the coasts around the world. The other study follows up the two pre-earthquake total electron content articles yesterday, but this one is on the magnetic field signals in those pre-seismic areas. While the total electron content can change for days beforehand, the magnetic field changes peak a day to an hour before the quake. Much more precise forecasting tool. We greatly appreciate your support. It's all eyes on the sun. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.